But would a travel ban from affected countries solve all of these problems? Internal medicine physician Dr. Jane Orient thinks a ban would be reasonable. Why, doctor? Well, it's not going to solve 100% of the problems. But you have to ask yourself, why are we all taking our shoes off at the airport knowing that it's not going to solve 100% of the problems, and yet we still do it? We've already seen what happens in Dallas. If one person comes through, what do we, we're following 100 people in Dallas. It's affecting all of the schools. One person in the hospital could contaminate a, lo- a good portion of the hospital and possibly infect some of the physicians and nurses and the housekeeping staff. I mean, the, the consequences of having one case come to this country are multiplied many, many times over. And we know the situation in Africa is just horrendous and getting worse. The epidemic is doubling about every three weeks. You know, doctor, the flip side of that is you have CDC authorities and the rest who say, you know, uh, the danger is that shutting down travel to and from affected regions, let's say Liberia, much of the uh, the affected African nations, I think there are seven that are being closely monitored, um, you, you create more harm uh, and more panic. What do you think? Most of the nations in Africa, or Southern Africa, are shutting down travel to the affected nations. I mean, what, what, you don't have to cut off the supply of humanitarian supplies and food, but to restrict the entry of people who are exposed to Ebola without having them go, at least without having them go through a quarantine process for at least 21 and maybe 25 days, we have a terrible situation in West Africa now. Do we want to have it all over the world? So your argument is that if you allow travel, even for those countries and regions that have, have, have maybe not put a strenuous a, a, a clamping down on, on travel, that you will heighten the risk that something bad happens, right? Well, one person coming in with, with an infection can cause havoc. We can look at what the, what the Israelis are doing. The Israeli Defense Force is not sending soldiers, even though they have one of the best rapid deployment teams in the world. They are sending some other people, some medical people, but they are going to neighboring countries, not right into Liberia. Because they, they said, we have no way of protecting our soldiers and keeping them from bringing the virus back home when they return. Maybe we should pay attention to what some of the other nations in the world are doing. Well put. Doctor, thank you. I'll be raising up the head of the CDC a little bit later in this broadcast. In the meantime, more suspected cases of Ebola seem to keep popping up across the country.